Hello everybody, DK Guilty here, and welcome to my review of the Transformers Studio Series, Starscream. Yes, just Starscream. Voyager class, I forgot to mention. So, yes, this is the next figure I picked up for my Transformers Studio Series collection, and let's not waste any time, let's jump right into the review, starting off with the box. So here is the box for Studio Series Starscream. We have an awesome picture of Starscream right there. One of my absolute favorite Michael Bay designs. Transformers Starscream Studio Series Hasbro Transformers on site. Awesome picture of Starscream. Once again, one of my all-time favorite Michael Bay designs. On the back, we have a nice picture of Starscream in both modes right there. Some cross cells right there. You got Bumblebee, Stinger, who I really want. And uh, Voyager Class Optimus Prime right there. And on the other side, nice picture of Starscream's mug right there. 06 Studio Series on the bottom. Absolutely nothing on the top. Transformers, which is an awesome movie. And here is Starscream, and I absolutely love him. Yeah, this guy is, uh, he's right up there with Brawl and Bone Crusher. He is, he is absolutely awesome. So here is Starscream. He is an F-22 Raptor, and the only reason I know that is because they directly pointed out in the movie, but, uh, this alt mode is absolutely awesome in my opinion. I think they absolutely killed it. Now, they do offer this fit, the, uh, they do offer this figure in, uh, in both versions. You can get the plain version, or you can get the tattooed version from the later sequels. I I went with the uh, I went with the regular version because because I also have the leader class version which does have the tattoo so you can get this figure in either the plain version or the uh, the tattooed version but as you can see I still have my leader class one so I decided to go with the plain version this time and also I actually think this plain version looked a lot cooler than the um than the tattooed version I don't know the pain just looks a little bit weird on that uh, on that tattooed version um probably I'm probably just you know I'm just uh, talking because I, I don't have it so I don't know obviously I don't know how it actually feels in person in person it could be absolutely awesome, but uh, yeah, I went with this one and I'm very happy with my purchase uh, But yes, I think they absolutely killed it on the design work I love that he has the Decepticon symbol right there One thing I really wish they would do more often with the Studio Series figures is give them the Decepticon symbols Because they seem to not have them most of the time Really nice, uh, uh, vibrant uh, yellow up there for the cockpit I like it, little uh, rubbery nose cone as well It's just rubbery at the tip though, not really It's kind of all hard plastic, just right at the tip It's a little bit bendy uh, right there Nice little like Air Force logo Go right there on the bottom. You can pretty much see some. You can see. You can see. You can see a little bit of robot cable, but it's actually a lot better than most. Um, than most jet formers usually end up being. Usually, you can usually just see the entire robot underneath there. But yeah, very very nicely done. Honestly, I'm I'm happy with it. And these two ports right here are awesome because they allow you to plug him onto a flight stand. So I am actually really happy that those ports are there because you can get a really cool flying pose using a flight stand with them so very nice that those ports exist also he does have landing gear this piece right here is landing gear it's kind of difficult to flip up so you know use some use some force and then you have two back here and there you go now he can have landing gear now he is not your rolling wheels these are plastic so he can't he can't roll unfortunately but it's okay because he's gonna be uh, in the air for most of the time he's in vehicle mode anyway for me he's gonna be on that on that dynamic stand you just saw but yeah uh, I, I do think the landing gear is nice you know always uh, always appreciated so you can actually you know just hold them up very very cool uh, so yeah that's pretty much all there is to talk about with the vehicle mode now for comparison Wait, actually, one more thing. He does include his cool little missile launcher thing that he had in the first movie, which I really like. This is another thing about the uh, about the two versions. If you get the the tattooed version instead of this, he comes with the buzzsaw hand. So you have to pick which one you want. Would you rather have this or the buzzsaw hand, or the buzzsaw hand? Me, perfect. Me personally, I would rather have this. So you do get his little missile rack thing that like flips over and it shoots missiles. And you got the little rubbery um little rubbery blade right there as well. Very very cool and. You can store this very, very nicely in vehicle mode. There are just these two tabs right there, and those go into those two little slots right there. And just like that, you can have that stored. And it's very, very elegant because it doesn't, because it's not just like plugged onto the top of the jet. No, it's actually stored in a nice little fashion. You can still kind of see it back there, but I, I think that's awesome storage. And it's awesome that you can just uh, plug it onto the back and just kind of forget about it. It's very, very, very nice. All right, and for comparison, here he is with Voyager class Megatron. It's the wrong movie, but eh, yeah, 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 there you go. There he is with that. Kind of be easier to just kind of do it like that, I think. So there you go. That's how he scales with Voyager Megatron. Once again, it's the wrong movie, but here he is with Brawl. Here he is with Bone Crusher. Here he is with Soundwave. 
And last but not least, here he is with the leader class star screen because I have it. So there you go. That's how he scales with the old leader class figure right there. All righty, now for transformation. So, as always, there will be timestamps in the top comment down below uh, to where you can skip the transformations at your leisure. But I think his transformation is pretty fun. I rather do enjoy it. So, to transform him, what you're going to do is, first of all, you're going to want to pop off his little weapon off of the back here. And you're going to want to flip up the landing gears. So, there you have that first step. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to come back here to these wing sections and you actually kind of want to just pull them up just like this and that will kind of disengage them from all the locks that they're in. As you can see there, they just kind of slide up and do the other and do the same thing on the other side here. And there you go. They have this. I do kind of worry about these little tabs here. I do hope those don't, uh, those don't break off. I don't think they will. I'm pretty sure Hasbro probably is smarter than that, but there you go. The, that's the, uh, the first step you do there. Next, you want to turn them around, and you want to flip this little section. You can you can already fold these uh, these little pieces down. It, it, one thing I will say about this figure that I absolutely love is that it has this little stopping point for the uh, for the little for these little back. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you would call these the, the these these pieces. I mean, you can't like push it further because if I bring in the. I wish the leader class figure had that. As you can see there, you can you can't really like get it in like a proper thing. You have to like really try to get it in the proper thing. So I really appreciate those little stoppers. I just wanted to throw that in there real quick. But yeah, you can just fold those down to get them out of your way and come back here to this piece, fold it out, and then lift these pieces up right there. And then you want to just kind of angle them forward just like that, so you have some clearance there. So once again, just angle it forward like there, just so you have some clearance in that space that you can just pull these pieces out. So you want to make sure you have the clearance necessary to pull those pieces out just like that so if you see there you need to be able to just get that little white speed that little white piece I'm sorry I'm trying to get some light in there for you and you just want to be able to pull that right out of there and there you go then you can flip these pieces out and fold them that way all right now take this little piece right here and fold it up just like so, and then you want to fold this entire assembly down just like that, which is going to reveal the head, and you want to get it straight like this, and then you just want to get that little section right there. You want to get that in between there, fold, flip it down, get, it, get the little nose cone into that little crevice right there, and then close that up, bring the head fully up just like that. Now you want to bring these pieces that you, the, the pieces that you slid up, you want to bring those forward, and you want to lift this piece out, and you want to flip out this piece and bring it forward, fold it up, and then you want to get that slot right there into that tab. So that tab into that slot. And right, just like that. And then you have that side done. Do the same thing on the other side. Fold this piece out. Flip this out just like that. I apologize, my hand's in the way constantly. But once again, just get that into that little piece right there, that slot into that tab. And there you have that. He is coming together now. So what you want to do now is you want to come back here and you want to take this piece right here. This entire assembly is just on one little piece here. And you just want to fold this piece up. That came untabbed. And you want to tab these two tabs into those two slots on the back there. Pretty, pretty easy. Just pull them up and peg them in to place just like so. And that's all she wrote for the backpack. And then you want to take the legs down here and they just unpeg. And then you want to split them down here, bring them down and flip his feet forward just like that. And that's it for the legs. And the final step is just rotate the arms down, flip out his hands and rotate them this way on that ball joint. So flip down the hands and rotate them that way. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have Dorito Scream in his robot mode and he just looks fantastic. And yeah, I absolutely love this robot mode. I mean, this is one of my absolute favorite Michael Bay designs. I think he just looks absolutely awesome. I mean, yes, he does. He is. I call him Dorito Scream for a reason. He's got. He looks like a Dorito, but still, I I love this design. I think it is just so cool. And anybody that hates on this design, honestly, you're you're dead to me. This is such a cool design. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's not the most star screamy design, but still, I mean, I I absolutely love it. I think this design is so cool, especially the head sculpt. I absolutely love this head sculpt it is just it's so creepy and cool looking it's just i love it man it just looks so cool it's such a unique design for a decepticon it's just 
I love it. I love everything about this head sculpt. And, uh, and the last night when he pulls the freaking head out, very, very cool. I love the way that this looks. And then moving down, you have the cockpit section right there. Beautifully captures the movie appearance. I love the way, I love the way they did this. Everything that comes, everything that comes together right here really brings the movie appearance together. Just absolutely awesome. They didn't even give you the choice of having his legs straight, which I appreciate because they, he, he's stuck. He's stuck permanently in chicken leg mode because that's what he had in the movie. So I personally do like that because it just makes it a lot easier to land the proper, to, to land the proper star screen pose. So yeah, I really appreciate that. And then the arms look really, really cool right there. All the nice molded detail. Very cool. The backpack, virtually non-existent. Pretty much nothing to speak of. You do have these ports right here, which is really cool because you can take the uh, the weapon and you can store it on the back just like that. Now, if you just store it straight up like that, you can kind of see it peeking over his head. So what I like to do is I just like to rotate it to the side right there. And there you go. Out of sight, out of mind, the, the weapon can be stored on the back. So I absolutely love everything about this robot mode. I just think he looks so, so cool. But of course, for him to use the weapon, they thought about that too. And don't worry, it's so, it's such an awesome way of doing this. So you can do it on either side. And what you do is you just fold the hand up right there, flip it over so that this little piece, so that the uh, the hand section is, uh, is uh, backwards. And then you want to just take this piece and it has this little tabbing uh, assembly right there. And those are just going to tab into those two slots in the wrist. And if you do that, it gives the illusion that his hand has transformed into that missile rack thing right there. You don't have to turn the arm over if you don't want. I just don't like the hand showing, but I mean, it gives you more articulation to have it uh, doing it this way, but this way just looks better to me because you don't have that hand just showing right there. But I absolutely love the way that looks. It looks, it just looks like his hand transformed into the missile rack. That is just, that is just so damn cool. I mean, if you, I guess if you wanted to, since these are just on ball joints, you could just kind of pop it off the ball joint and then put that on just like that and then flip it back over and then you wouldn't have the hand showing if you want to do that there you go so now he has all the uh now now he has all the articulation doesn't have the hand showing you just gotta pop it off the ball joint i mean you know it's just a ball joint so you can just pop it right back on so yeah you could do that if you wanted to if you really wanted to if you wanted that articulation so yeah i really love that though i think that is just so so cool and when you don't want to use it you just pop it off Come on, come on off. There we go. And just store it on the back. Just awesome. Absolutely awesome. I love it. I love everything that they did with that weapon. The storage, the way it integrates into the figure. Just so, so cool. Now, for articulation, the head articulation is pretty good because you can get it going up because of the transformation. However, if you move it, you can't really get it going up at all. But you can swivel it. You can swivel it so you can get some over and over there. It's not a ball joint though, so it's it's fairly limited. But I mean, the way the head sculpt is uh, is made, it kind of has to be, I think. Uh, arms can do a full 360; they can go out that far. Uh, double jointed bend at the elbows, so you can get pretty much full range of movement right there. Hands are on a ball joint, like I said previously, so they can swivel, they can go up and down, you can move it this way if you want. L, I mean, do do whatever you want. Nothing in the torso, which is something I think the leader class does win over because the leader class has butterfly joints in the torso. But legs can go forward that far; they can go back. That that far. Uh, the knees can, the, the knees are very, you know, the knees are very strange for these kind of chicken legged designs right here. I mean, you can do, yeah, you can just kind of, you just kind of have to see what you can do on your own. I mean, you can kind of move them forward, you can move them back and all that good stuff. You do have a swivel right here, which is pretty nice. No ankle pivot, but you do have up, uh, but you do have downward and just minor amount of upward movement right there. Nothing in the back either because the back are the, uh, the, the landing gear, which I think is a cool, I think that's a pretty cool little use of the, the landing gear, making them the heel spurs. But yeah, there you go. That is it for articulation. Also, once again, you do have those ports on the back. So when you want to put, if you want to put them on a flight stand, you have that port for them. You can do that. And take your stand, and you can just plug it right into that port. This is a NECA dynamic stand, and it works great for him, in my opinion. And there you go. You can put him in some flying poses right there if you want to. So, very, very cool. I mean, he, he did, you know, he did have the, uh, the thrusters on the back, but, I mean, you don't see it anyway. So, there you go. Very, very cool, in my opinion. Also, one more thing I wanted to show up in robot mode real quick. Um, if you remember in the movie, he had a little Gatling gun on his forearm over here. And if, and if you, uh, also on the leader class figure, he also has a little Gatling gun on his forearm right there. So if you wanted to do that, if you have the Voyager class brawl, then you can take his little mini gun here and you can put it in this little port on his arm and he can have his little 
wrist mounted Gatling gun. Now, of course, it's going to be a little bit fidgety because you're not going to have the uh, the elbow to work with. But I mean, there you go. If you want, if you want to give him the uh, the Gatling gun, if you have the brawl, which if you don't have the brawl, definitely get the brawl uh, because he's fantastic. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below to my playlist so you can watch the brawl review if you want. Um, but yeah, if you want to do that, there you go. He, he can he can do that. You can give him his Gatling gun now. For comparison, I apologize for that, here he is with the Voyager class Megatron. Once again, it's the wrong movie, but hey, it, it, they, there you go, it's Megatron nonetheless, so there you have that. Here he is with Brawl. Here he is with Bone Crusher. Here he is with the old Voyager class Shockwave. For, for what it counts. And here he is with Soundwave. And last but not least, here he is with the leader class Star Scream. And this thing is very old and kind of difficult to get to stand up. But there he is with the leader class star scream and y'all are not gonna believe this but i genuinely prefer this uh this new studio series one i mean i have this is a figure for, this is a toy from my childhood it was one of my favorite toys as a kid i will never par with it it holds too many memories and i absolutely love this toy but you know this thing is just awesome in every way i mean the only thing that this guy has going for him uh in terms of uh in this comparison is these butterfly joints right here which which are very very nice i will say uh but still i mean this is amazing and i mean that movie masterpiece star scream look like it looks like it blows both of these two out of the water and i do plan on picking that up so uh yeah they have that comparison though for what it's worth i do prefer the new uh the new studio series one over this one maybe it's just because i don't know i just um I just think he overall looks a whole lot better, especially like in the in the torso part. Like in the torso over here, I mean, there's all the molded detail, but none of it is picked out in paint. But in this one, the torso is so colorful and it's really, really, really vibrant and nice looking. It's just, it's really, really nicely done. I, I do overall prefer the studio series, but I will still never part with this thing because it holds too many precious memories. And here he is with the of uh, seven inch Michael Myers from NECA so you can see how he sails with a standard seven inch scale figure and as you can see he's pretty much seven inches as you can see there and there you have it now for something new for the uh, Transformer reviews from now on I'm going to be showcasing the reverse transformation as well so uh, if you would like to skip that once again the, the time the timestamps will be in the very top comment in the comment section down below so if you want to skip that go ahead and skip it but I am going to uh, to show you reverse transformations from here on out so let's go so to to, to transform Starscream back into his F22 Raptor flip these pieces forward and they will pop off what the fuck that that does happen every now and then it just pops right back on it's 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 a little bit obnoxious but it just pops right back on so there you go fold his arms out just to get them out of the way and what you're going to do is you're going to take this little pit panel here mo move that forward and lift this entire assembly out of the torso make sure these pieces aren't in the way of anything as it's coming out and it's why are you not coming out this should be coming out this should be coming out why are you not coming out so you've got to make sure that you pull it straight first so you can get the uh, the head in that little cubby hole and then push it all the way up right there because it has two hinges. So you have to make sure you get it straight and then put it into place right there. So that's what you have to do for that. All right, now we're going to take the, oh, actually you got to take the weapon off, of course. And what you're going to do is you're going to unpeg the backpack here. So just do that and just move that down a little bit and then take these sections here and fold them off and then you can fold both of these pieces in and just fold them into the wings right there which is pretty cool it just kind of tucks up into there like that which is pretty cool at this point we can go ahead and do the legs so the legs are just going to fold up and there's a little tab there's a tab right there in the leg and it's going to go into that slot right there so tab that into place make sure the foot is out of the way it just uh it just rotates up and there you go they have a, a leg all done on the other side as well once again just come up here you can move this forward for, to get it out of your way once again tab slot right there move it forward bring the foot up and tab that into place and then what you can do is you can push them together back here and this and they will tab together at the bottom right there so boom make sure everything is tabbed in if it came out and there you go it clips in place very 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 securely right there 
at this point, you can go ahead and move these. Well, you got to get this piece out of here for a second. And then why is this not moving? Come on, there we go. Move this piece back just like this. Make sure that these feet aren't in the way of anything right there. So just push the feet inward just like that, just so they're not in the way. And just bring those back just like this. Now you can take this piece, rot rotate it down. This is kind of difficult to do, but once you get it, you just kind of have to get it rotated down there you go and just clip it into place just like that you can bring these up if you want but it's actually easier to leave them down until you're ready for them now fold this piece back up because you're going to need that and what you're going to do here this is the part i actually kind of don't really enjoy because you have to fold these in and get these out of your way and then you have to get these in here just like so get them in here but you don't want to just put them straight you want to bring them up like this and just have them angled in and that will allow you to have clearance to swing them in to this little crevasse here and then you can peg that peg into that slot right there so that peg into that slot and you just want to get that in there just like so and boom there you go so get that peg into that slot it's kind of giving me a hard time right now there you go well there you go and there you go now you have to do the same thing on the other side here i apologize for that and you just gotta fold this in fold this piece in get it around all this junk here and why are you not jesus christ this is so obnoxious <laughs> and fold this piece up like this and then you want to angle this piece up just so you have the clearance to swing it in to the crevasse just like that, and get it pegged into place just like that, just like you did with the other one right there. Now you want to take the hands, fold them down, and peg them into place just like you do to get the weapon. So once again, peg right there in the forearm, slot right there in the hand, fold it down and into the peg just like that and then fold these pieces down and peg them into those pegs down there. Fold that piece down, fold this piece back, clip it into place, fold these pieces up, and once again, fold these pieces in and clip them into place, just like so. Get everything situated, bring out your landing gear. Boom, 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 and there you have Starscream back in his F-22 Raptor mode. And of course, you can take the weapon and just plug it onto those slots, and boom. There you have Starscream back in his vehicle mode. So yeah, fun, fun reverse transformation. I do enjoy it. Just those little slots, just this little, this little area right here is just a little bit, uh, a little bit complicated to do. But once you get it done, it is very, very, very beautiful. I mean, I love this uh, alt, alt mode. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I think it just looks so, so cool. And it's a very, very fun alt mode to just kind of whoosh around, whoosh, whoosh. It's just, it's really, really fun. So there you have that. Now for our showcase. Alrighty, final thoughts on Studio Series Starscream. This is another absolute smash hit for the Studio Series. This figure is absolutely awesome. Uh, I think he's probably my new second favorite. At the moment, I'd have to say my absolute favorite is Brawl. Brawl is my absolute favorite figure in the Studio Series so far. I just think they absolutely knocked it out of the park with him. Starscream here is probably going to be my new second favorite. It was Bone Crusher. Now I think Starscream is my new second favorite. And Bone Crusher is now my third favorite. Um, this figure is awesome. I mean, everything about him. Both modes look absolutely incredible. The paintwork is fantastic. Articulation is very good, very serviceable. I love the weapon they gave him. I love that. I love everything they did with the weapon, the integration. 
how it how it looks how how it looks like his arm just transforms into it how you can store it on the back and how it stores so elegantly in both modes it's just really 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 well done all the way around um i absolutely love this figure now i believe this figure is actually just an upscaled version of an older starscream figure a, an old deluxe starscream figure but honestly I mean, th that's not a complaint at all because it clearly that was a very good mold because this figure is an absolute knockout win. He is, he is just awesome. I think everything about him is just fantastic. And I am just, I am just so, I, I'm blown away by these Studio Series figures. Uh, they are just, they just look amazing. And I will say this, I've seen, I like, I've like watched like all the reviews for every single Studio Series figures. And I, and I gotta tell you, man, these movie one Decepticons as well as the Constructicons, they look like Hasbro just like absolutely, let's like put all their time and effort into the movie one Decepticons and the Constructicons because these figures are so amazing. And I mean, the other ones, they don't look, they don't look as great. Like I believe on the back here, yeah, is this Optimus Prime. That Optimus Prime right there, that figure honestly does not look too great to me. I'm sure it's probably a case of if I were to have it in hand, I would probably love it. You know, it's how it is for most things. But I don't know, man. That Optimus Prime, just the color, the color on that Optimus Prime just looks so weird to me. And the, the chest and everything. I mean, I'm not saying that the figure is horrible because I don't have it. I can't I can't speak for a figure I don't have. But I'm just saying, like, that that figure to me does not look nearly as good as these other, as these, uh, these movie one Decepticons like Starscream and Brawl here. They're just, these are just absolute knockout wins, man. I absolutely love them. Starscream here is going to be getting a 9 out of 10, just like Bone Crusher and Brawl. I can't give him a 10 out of 10 because, I mean, he, he is kind of, he does have those things in transformation, like the whole clearance things with this. It's just, it's just a little bit unfun to do. It's very easy to do. And also, I do kind of worry about when you, when you pull those wings up to transform him back, I do kind of worry about those pegs breaking off eventually. I'm, I'm not too worried about it. Even if those pegs do break off, he'll still transform just fine. I mean, there's plenty of things holding it in place so i'm not too worried about it or anything but it does it is definitely something that i want to keep in mind those pegs right there are what i'm talking about on his back right there um but I mean, other than those few little issues, I mean, eh, some some ankle pivot would have been nice as well. But other than those few little issues, he's he's pretty much perfect. I mean, I absolutely love this thing. So there you have it. There you have my. There is. This has been the review of the Transformer Studio Series Voyager Class Star Scream. My next pickup, uh, I am hoping to pick up, is going to be Blackout. I have already um, actually secured a Barricade. It could be a. It's gonna be a while till I get him. Uh, I mean, well, actually, I don't know when I'm gonna get him. It's gonna be. It could be tomorrow it could be in a week it could be in a month and a half i mean i have no idea when i'm gonna get him but uh i have secured one but uh yes i am i am so hooked on this line right now man and, and i'm so excited for some of the newer ones too the blitzwing looks amazing i'll definitely be picking up blitzwing uh i do want to finish devastator so i'm going to be getting overload when he's available uh the sound wave the new uh the, the satellite version of sound wave looks pretty cool there was a couple others as well i mean I, eventually i'm gonna want to probably start picking up autobots as well and the Wreckers look really cool, so yeah, I'm hooked. I'm hooked. This Studio Series line has totally got me hooked, man. This these these figures are awesome, man. I've never seen Hasbro just destroy it so much. I mean, like the older movie figures were great, and I've had I've had quite a few Starscream figures. I had the original Voyager class, the one with uh, with guns for hands, yeah, and I also had the uh, the Voyager Revenge of the Fallen one as well. Uh, both of those were great. I mean, I I have nothing but fond memories of those from my childhood, and obviously the the Leader class one as well. Obviously, really great as well um but none of them even stacks up to this one now how will this stack up to the movie masterpiece starscream when i eventually pick that up because i do intend to pick that up as well as the other two movie masterpiece decepticons we'll see we'll see i mean that thing looks incredible so we'll see won't we but uh yeah that's uh that's all i really have to say here so there you have the review thank you all so much for watching this video subscribe for more studio series reviews and this is dk guillotine uh signing out